In this video, we're going to see how to implement a photo carousel in Bootstrap. So right now you see that I'm on the specimens by plant page and I put in plant number 85 and I'm showing one specimen for this plant. And this specimen has two photos associated with it, but we're reading it. And naturally the photo itself would be a better description because we know that pictures are faster than words. So one of the first things that we want to do is navigate to this specimen details page. Let's go ahead and zoom up so we can see it in high def and then empty some things out of it. We'll go within the body section and most of this we can eliminate. Now Bootstrap, which we've seen before, gives us a really handy carousel. So I'm going to take some of the sample code that they've given us and move it into our project and then alter it as needed. Now, as you see, this is what the carousel looks like. You've probably seen these things before. You can simply iterate over a collection of photos, which is ideal for us. We use the version with controls, so I'll simply hit the copy button, navigate back to my development environment, and paste. I'll explain what this is with an overview here. Notice that the open and close div essentially contains everything, and it has an ID, carousel example controls. That's important if you change it. Because if we take a look at the bottom here, you see two anchor tags. And those anchor tags are essentially the back and forward buttons that you see here. But they have to know what they're coordinating, what they're going back and forward between. So note that the href here, carousel example controls, matches this div ID exactly. And that's important. So if you change one, you want to change both. Next, you'll see that we have a set of repeating divs that look very similar. This is the part that we want to iterate over. In other words, every photo that is associated with our specimen should have its own div tag. And we can easily do that with a bit of looping with time leaf. But there's one little trick here. One of them has to be marked as active. Unless we have a good programmatic way to do that, uh, we can put in a dummy image. And I've created a dummy image for us. You see in paint, I have the simple start slideshow image that I've made. And the good thing is this will give us a little bit of practice in how we can link a static image. And from that, we can learn how we can link dynamic images. For the source attribute, we're going to do something funny here. SRC is a natural HTML attribute of the IMG class. But if we put TH before it, then we get to use our timely library. And we can use variables and the like. So now inside of this, we can say at symbol open curly, dollar sign open curly, then single tick photos slash, we see it's start slideshow PNG with capital S and start capital S and slideshow. And so we make the attribute look just like it. Looks like my closed curlies are a little bit out of balance. Looks like I just need one more. Red line goes away and we're all set. We still need to fill in the source details for the other images. That's what we're going to do in a loop. So let me go down to one. And before I forget, I'm going to make that a TH source tag. Now, the trick is, at this point, we've only put static details into this form. But we want to take advantage of the specimens that are getting pa passed back to us. Let's take a look at that construction. If I go to the controller, we'll see the specimens by plant is creating a list of specimens and returning that to us, to our HTML page, associated with the name specimens. If we have that much, we know what our next step is going to be on our details page. We're going to be mixing a bit of bootstrap time leaf and just plain old HTML and other things. Let's go ahead and take the bootstrap stuff and indent it by one tab so that we can see it visibly. Now around this, I'm going to put a time leaf loop. And we know many times with time leaf, we can loop with the th each attribute. That makes a lot of sense in a div tag. So we'll say div th each. Inside of this, we put our loop expression, just like a normal for each loop. We start with the singular type specimen, then a colon, and then dollar sign specimens. And sorry, it should be in curlies. Put the other div tag towards the bottom, and then I'll explain what I just did. So if we take a look at the th each, specimens represents the plural type, and indeed it is what we are getting back from our controller when we hit that endpoint. Now we know iteration means that we have a collection of similar objects and we're gonna shake hands with each one of them, one at a time. The object we're currently shaking hands with is this one called specimen. So with this in place, 
we can now make this bootstrap form a bit more dynamic. Let's start by simply saying what specimen we have. We'll say uh, pth colon text equals and then dollar sign curly specimen. And close the p tag. This is simply going to print out our specimen details, but we can reuse this concept many other times. Let's now focus on making this image dynamic. And what, what I mean by that is each photo that we have associated with a specimen will have one of these tags created for us. So we need to make a loop here as well. Div class carousel item is fine. Let's mix this with a bit of our time leaf magic and say th colon each. So you notice we're iterating it again, a loop within a loop, which in big O syntax is considered O n squared. The th each syntax is going to be similar to what we have up above, where we have a singular, a colon, and then a plural, which indicates the collection we're iterating over. So the singular is easy. The singular is going to be photo and then a colon, and then the plural gets a little bit interesting. Dollar sign curly, specimen, photos. This is something we're going to call ognal syntax or object graph notation language syntax, which means if you start with a variable, you can use naming conventions to invoke the getters and setters on the attributes of that variable, and you can continue to do this. So you could say vehicle dot engine, dot cylinder, dot diameter, something like that. And you could walk from a very complex type to a very simple type. So we're starting with specimen and what are we walking down to? Photos. And you notice it was able to autocomplete for me because it had an idea of what I was doing. Now with access to the singular photo object that we're iterating over in this collection, we have enough information to fill out our THSRC. So remember TH means time leaf. There are a couple of symbols that we're going to use. First, at symbol, open curly, close curly, which means we're going to use time leaf to style this up. And then dollar sign to open curly. And then we'll say single quote, photos, slash, and then close single quote, and then use the plus, name, plus sign, and then photo dot file name. And you notice that it's able to autocomplete that file name just as well here. So you see what we're doing is iterating over the photos, getting each individual photo, getting its file name, and concatenating that together with the directory where our photos are stored. Let me start with the start slash so that it knows that that's uh, relative. I restarted the application and you see it works. A couple things that I need to do. First of all, I'm going to add a two string exempt to the photos from the specimen because we don't really need to see the photo metadata anymore. As a matter of fact, I could take this out and I could really style it to look a lot better, but our focus in this video was the photo carousel. Secondly, the carousel is a bit big, so I might do some constraint there, but nonetheless, you could see that it's iterating through the photos and indeed the navigation works. And the reality is it really didn't take a lot of work. Probably the most confusing thing was just mixing the time leaf and the bootstrap, but really HTML wise, it's only about a couple dozen lines. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.